Let me ask something, Hicks. Uh, a little while ago, I had Dave take a breakdown, start screaming. I, I couldn't understand him. I got him out of the room. Now I got fucking Fez screaming, and I don't understand even the points he's trying to make. It's crazy town today, maybe. Everyone's losing their shit. Are you guys losing your shit at fucking Crazy Town, Fez? I am not losing my shit at Crazy Town. Also, and I think Fez missed this uh, this morning, but Dave had almost a serious meltdown today when he came in. Like a real, he was had a real, almost a real freak out. I bring uh, Dave in here, and then I want you to tell me the story exactly what happened. What what went wrong, Hicks? Well, he can't. He got in around nine ten, and like I could tell as soon as he walked in because he didn't say hello. That like, and he was on the phone. And he had crazy eyes, crazy right. eyes I haven't seen in a long time. And he's saying, that, and he's just, he just kept on telling me, I can't get my wife, I can't get my wife. She sent me a weird text message. And he, I could literally see like real fear and fucking things are going loose in his head uh, type of uh, vibe from him. He's not sleeping a lot. What the hell's going on? No, um, are you mad that Hicks even brought this up to me? No, it's, he's allowed. He's my buddy. Um, yeah. I had gotten a text message at like 8.40 or so that said, I always loved you the best from my wife. And I was like, that's a weird text message to get, to say that in the past tense. I always loved you. Right. Now, having said that, the kids get up at 7.30, so I knew she was up mm -hmm. right at that time. So once she said that, I got the text, maybe it was 8.30, I got that text message. So I said, I'm on the bus. So I wrote back to her, are you okay? That's a strange thing to text someone, right. saying, I loved you the best, right. past tense. So no answer. I'm sitting there on the bus. I'm texting away. No answer. So then I got off the bus, and I called her straight for a half an hour or so, um, just constantly calling, left like seven voice messages. She never picked up. So um, the lack of sleep... And the fact that our household is under a lot of stress, right. I envisioned a suicide type deal. <laughs> okay, that's a. I, I'm only laughing because I know you're, you guys crazy. are so beaten down that you're at that point that if you can't reach somebody, yeah. and everyone's been like, you know, at that point, I wouldn't normally think of a suicide, but I know what it's like when you can't find a family member. <laughs> And no, I thought she. Yeah. What I thought was my imagination went wild. The kids are very ill. Even Juliana is now going to the doctor. She's throwing up. Stan still's throwing up. And I thought what probably happened is because I leave the house before the kids are awake. She came up and Stan is like dead, maybe. And then she decided to kill herself. Okay. <laughs> so that there's your fears. I've now, lost my fucking mind. Let's move on I'm again. I'm almost breaking down now, Let, thinking about it. It's Shutter Island. Like, <laughs> it, wait, hold on. You actually can picture that happening. You're so tired that as you start to tell the I fantasy... Mean, I'm laughing, too, but I'm I understand. Crying. Yeah. As, as you start to tell the fantasy, well, I you can picture the stress being so bad that that happens. I was, gonna, I was like very close to uh, getting in the bus and... Uh, Calling Pepper and say I, I can't right. go in today. I have to go home because I think my wife is like dead on the kitchen floor. Right. And I was like right about to do that. For some reason, um, I decided I'll take a cab into work and then just keep calling her from work. But I was not doing any work. I was just sitting at my desk calling. I called a rel. I called Solera and said I can't get in touch with my wife. Can you try her? Maybe she's like pissed off at me. But then Solera said she can't get in touch with her either. So I'm like, she's dead. So you were sure <laughs> that your wife had killed herself yes. because you couldn't reach her. We, and we the don't... tears are just coming out of your eyes right now. Yeah. I understand. Well, I thought she was dead like this morning. Right. I understand. So And, and possibly a child as well. I understand. Sit down, Dave. I want you to sit down and just relax. Fezzi, you sit down. Let's just right. fucking... Everybody chill the fuck out for a second. <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know, I know. Just I'm chill sure. the fuck out. Now, obviously you're at this point because the stress has just been... Yeah, I got, got a lot of it, And then you're not sleeping. There's no sleep. Killed kids are um, very sick. I mean, Jules will get over it, but, right. you know, it's difficult to watch both kids be sick. You're, I, I count on Juliana, yeah. selfishly, to be the healthy one. So I could throw her up in the air and shit like that because you just can't do it with Stan. You play with him an incy bit rough and he throws up and then it's like you know you trigger something all right so uh, and you finance just everything my world is crashing 
I understand, but I, that's why I want you to relax for a second. I'm, I am. I'm going and to now, relax. And I know that you're ups- upset as if this actually happened. But yeah. get to the fucking end of the story. It didn't happen. It didn't happen at all. So uh, I called her. No. So at 930, she called me and said, what's going on? I said, uh, what the hell? How, how, I've been calling you for 40 minutes mm-hmm. and texted you. You know, what's what's happening here? And she said, uh Oh, I didn't get your messages on my phone. Um, I don't even... And then I said, well, what the fuck did that text message mean? And she said she was trying out her new iTouch and decided to send me that text message last night. But the thing is, I didn't get the text message till 8.30 in the morning today. So that's why I got freaked out. And I was like, what the fuck? And I told her, I yelled at her, just you screamed, you have to get a new phone, like, t- today. If, you, if you're not going to get my... Because she said her phone was on, and the, it never rang. She had been awake, but the phone was on, and it never rang. I called her for 40 minutes and left six messages. Even if the phone doesn't ring, usually when you leave a voice message, you get that beep, beep, and, and the message comes through. So w- what's going on here? Well, so I, 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 I almost had a breakdown. Yeah. Well, you, you're kind of still right there. I mean, you are at a point that even a fantasy that you had is fucking still freaking you yes. out, making you cry yes. hours later. Yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. What is it that you need? It's just what cr- do you need? Just the obviously the healthcare stuff has been a nightmare. I, I don't. And, I don't even know. Really. You know, I remember when we talked about this before. About two kids being so... People don't realize when even yeah. having one kid, it changes your life. But two little kids is just massive. Yeah. And then when you have one of them has the, the physical problems that Dude, Stan's going through key. right now, it's just unbelievable. That's the key. It's, it's just a healthy Stan really would help us out at this point. So, that, I mean, that's... You know, and it's just like... It, it, it's, it's very difficult. You know, I, I don't know, really. Just so much stuff. Uh, it's just, it, it, it just, uh, I don't know. The last like 24, 48, 72, 96 plus 24 hours has been, you know, tough. I don't know if that made any sense. No, it really didn't make a lot. No, I was wh- trying to. Why has like the past week been so extra hard? Just but because Stan's he, sick? He's really sick. And, you know, just, uh, it's tax season. Right. And that, that freaks me out. I don't understand. I really, I don't understand how someone can make so little money and then have to get a third of it away. And the bills that keep coming in, it's like, what the fuck? You, you know, it's just, it's, it, it's crazy. And then with Juliana, when she got sick, and then, I don't know. I'm just, I, I, I did lose it. I, I mean, I know I'm, I'm still there right now, but I think I could come back from it. But this morning was a... a yeah, was so by the time that the Ken the Movie Guy thing, or whatever his name is, <laughs> came up, you were... And I was like, why is he so overreacting? And I had no idea that you had the morning that you had. Yeah, it was a brutal morning. And it, this is on top of, as you pointed right. out, um, an hour and a half every night. Like, last night I didn't sleep at all. And then I was really pissed off on my computer. I was, like, yelling at my computer. I, I might have broken my laptop, but thank God we have a uh, desktop because I couldn't find good news stories, and I'm just sitting there. and I understand. I feel like the laptop is fucking me over. Here, here's and what- then the laptop goes... Out. I I lose the connection every time the neighbor gets on her phone. God knows how that's possible. All right, here's what's happening, Dave. You're at such a level of stress that anyone that adds even a slightly more stress, the fucking, you know, the, the mail is late. Yeah, the cup, just one extra drop, and suddenly you're feeling like the laptop not reacting, and suddenly it feels like the whole fucking thing is coming down. Well, I was contemplating going to my next-door neighbors yesterday and saying, you know, who who goes on the phone at 1030 at night? Right. Make your phone calls and make them over with by 9 o'clock at night. That's the way America works. Right. And this person, whenever they get on the phone, it cuts off my laptop service. Why don't, why don't we do this? Just I want you to settle down. 
How about me, you, and Rob Cross sit down after the show today, and we just, you know, start to think if there's anything that we could all do to help you here. Okay. Because I see that you're cracking. <laughs> and I don't mean that as a bad thing. It's no, not, I hear you. I'm not, uh, you know... Uh, I was uncracked until today. I, I know. I, th I felt like I was bottling well, I, it up well. I understand. But, you know, for a while, I've seen how tired you are. And, you know, even like y your own body's breaking down a little bit. And, you know, you're getting a cold. You're slurring. I don't know what we can do. <laughs> slurring? Uh, but, but, I mean, in your normal speaking voice. Right. You've been slurring a little bit. Really? Yeah, just, just from exhaustion. And you're doing great work. Everybody's happy with you. But I see that, you know, you're all fucked up. And believe me, I go through the same stuff. Yeah. Uh, today. I'm just cracking up. I, I feel like I could, I might not break down. I know. I, I was just hoping that this was a morning thing and I'll be good. That's why I didn't even want to talk to you guys about it. I understand. I felt like there's no point in telling Ron Fez about it. I was having the same kind of morning. I was uh, having breakfast out on a yacht. <laughs> and mm. we get to the, uh, the caviar. And yeah. the, uh, and of course I had the strawberries and, and sugar, right. and then they're trying to use sweet and low. I just yeah. fucking turn the whole tray over. Right. I yell, "Fuck this ship!" Well, we all have our problems, I guess. Then. Well, mine Mr. are, yeah, mine are worse because I really planned on that being fantastic. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're worse. But why don't we get you and Rob together? See if we can't, you know, figure out something that helps a little bit. Okay. And he and I were talking about you the other day. Everybody's on your side here. Everybody knows that, you know, you need to do stuff. And you're just at a breaking point. Well, It's not yeah. a bad... I mean... And, but, I am at a breaking point. Well, today I am. Today. I understand, but I'm just saying, professionally and personally, you're working really hard, round the clock. That's okay. It, it's much better... That you're at a fucking place like this that we could say, hey, what can we all do here? Rather than do something like snap, take a trash can, beat Dave, I mean, beat Hicks or yeah. Fez to death with it. Well, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't strike out against people. But, but I'm I, saying you don't I know. Like, you're like a Rottweiler. Yeah, I am. And I, yeah, I mean, I guess I was going to go over to my neighbor's house. That was kind of scary. Mm. She would have been terrified of Late me. at night. Um, yes. Here is Bob in Portland. You're on a Fez. Oh, uh, yeah, Dave. Uh, I just want to let you know, uh, I really know what, you, uh, what you're going through, man. I had a, a son. Uh, he, had, uh, he had leukemia and juvenile diabetes at the same time, man. And it was a tough couple of years, and I became a, a crisis counselor to try to help people to get through it. And the main thing is, man, take a little time off work. Get your, get your family in order, man. Just worry about yourself. I mean, bring back Black Girl for a minute. You'll be okay. Um, isn't it funny, though, when you find out the crisis counselors have already, like, fucked up? It's like you find out the same thing about shrinks. Yeah. That they, you know, suffer from different things. And I'm like, I know that you think that you would be the best to help, but I'm not sure. <laughs> well, you know, honestly, I, I think it's like Hemingway said, you know, that that, that suffering, it, it, it breeds an empathy that uh, most people don't have with treat people. They and then have... and then what did Hemingway do? He, he blew, blew his, his own fucking out. head off. You know what I mean? If I'm going to sit down and talk mental health, it ain't with Hemingway. Well, there was that DJ member on MTV who was going to have a show where he's going to help people get over their drug abuse. Oh, DJ AM or something? Then he All unfortunately right. OD'd. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, fuck. That's why, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't personally seek therapy. No offense to anyone who does, but. It's Fez. Just say me. Well, if Fez proves anything, it's a therapy doesn't work. I mean, it's the one, as he's saying with, with the Rottweilers, I think we can all go back and look at Fez yeah. and go, you just can't get help. I think You're it's, on your own in this fucking ugly right. universe. I think a release is, like, even if I had thrown my laptop out the window, which I was considering, I would have felt better, and then I probably would have been more sane this morning. So in retrospect, I wish I had done something like that because then that gets all of it out of my system. Maybe, maybe you're like one or of those a fucking punching bag, you know. Yeah. Sometimes it's you know all built up like that. Yeah. So I I kind of wish I had done something physical, not you know to anybody, but you know this way you know. You know, um, have you ever been to the uh, beach and they they have one of those parachutes that they pull you yes. around from a parasail? Boat? Yeah, like a parasail. Yeah. What you really need to do is get up on one of those. The view is just amazing, and then take a knife and cut that rope, and wherever 
the wind takes you, right? Yeah. Will be better. Yeah. You'll have less problems. I agree. Either that, dye your hair black, uh, get some eye contacts, and just start a new <laughs> life. Just go to Europe and try to fade into the crowd. Um, here's uh, Ed. Ed, you're on Fez. Hey, uh, hey, Fezzy, I want to tell you, you shouldn't worry about pit bulls. You should be worrying about being in the same room with Dave right now. Run, Fez. Run! Well, I kind of brought that up that, you know, people do snap. And, uh, you know, we talked about the maniac who flew into the building in Austin. Uh, you know, Fez wants to say, how can these things happen? And Dave was empathizing with the guy a million percent. <laughs> yeah. I didn't um, even realize it. Yeah, you were like immediately like, yeah, I could see. And you just started to say like your plans of not hurting anybody but still showing off. You're running some kind of a, a dark fantasy about that. <laughs> Why don't we do this? After the show today, I'll walk you down to Rob's office. You guys could talk a little bit. Maybe there's somebody here in human resources or further up the line. Why are you laughing like <laughs> you this resource. is crazy? It's but maybe there's different ways of fucking help. I, I don't, don't fucking talk know. to one of those. Pe you be like a head shrinker that the human resources is going to. I don't know, Dave. I'm just saying I see you. You had a fantasy today that your wife killed herself. You got yourself into a state of believing it. It kind of seems like a guy who's on the edge. Yeah, I definitely believe that. Like I said, I was this close from ge getting off the bus and then getting back on the bus and saying to the driver, take me back to Jersey. All right. And my other point is this. Even though you know it's not true, yeah. right? You've, you've got the point. You're still crying. You're still in that place because you're, you're believing something awful is going to happen. All I'm saying is let's... Let's, you know, see if we can't get a little help for you right now. You're going through okay. a lot of fucking stuff. That's all I'm saying. By the way, the side touch was given to her uh, by her father. It was a gift in case anyone thinks that we bought it. Why would that have been any of our, any of our businesses of how know. your wife got an eye touch? I don't know. Because then people no, say he's it. upset about what his people? finances. What people? Message boarders. You know better than read the message boards, right? I should. But when you can't sleep at night, Ronnie, sometimes you go... All these fingers of mine, they're just gonna they're gonna bring me to a message board. And then I go, shit, why'd I do that? I should have fucking mm. should have gone to somewhere else. Google. Uh here's Dan and Phil, you're on a fez. Hey, I, I still don't understand what that text message meant. I mean, that was pretty crazy sounding. You did, did right? That's what got me if she said Hey, I, I love you, or something like that. I was like, okay, you know, that would have been so nice and great. Isn't it nice to be loved the best? I always loved you the best. I would have been curious. I would want to know the best compared to who. The, I always loved Fez. the past tense. Fez, Fez is right. Fez is right. Fez, if you have a thought, mm -hmm. it's normally crazy. Oh, yeah. So don't take him there. I'm being totally I fucking see serious. Fez's point, though. I know the Fez's, Fez's point is a point of paranoia and insanity. Yeah, and it was the the past tense that did it. And then when you make the call and you're like, "What the heck?" Now you're right. She's fine. She was eating waffles when she called me back. Mm, delicious. That goes. Um, here's Justin. Justin, PA. Yep. Yeah. Justin, we got you, buddy? Yes, sir. What can we do for you? I didn't know if you guys were still talking about breakdown. Go ahead. Um, no, I had a rough time at work waiting for a lot of money to come in, and we have a cat, and the cat actually scratched me in the face, and I actually ended up killing the cat. I shot it. All right. Again, I don't want a person like yourself to help out with Dave. Uh, Dave in Long Island, you're in running Fez. Hey, Ron. Hey, Dave. Uh, I'm really sorry that you're know, having a breakdown, man. But listen, <laughs> uh, I hate to say this, but I've seen it on shows and I've seen it firsthand. You may have mold where you live if Julianne is also throwing up because I've seen a show where no. kids it yeah. had the same symptoms uh, as yours. 
I, 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 hold on. I, very obs now I, I want to check my house. Well, you, you told we brought up mold a long time ago. Yeah, no, no. The, the, the doctors actually tested Stan for any kind of mold, asbestos, any kind of that stuff. They took thorough tests. It, 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 Should it somebody wasn't. come in and test your house? No, because, uh, no, because the doctor said that it was as thorough as... The, I mean, they're not just taking blood. They took shit out of his spinal cord. He, here's the scariest thing about young Stan. He's been checked in various hospitals by obviously brilliant people who still haven't come up with an Correct. answer of what's bothering him. And so many times when Dave got him to a place, he's like, thank God our, our prayers are being answered. This is going to be great. No, and then, you know, we're still here. The specialists don't even know what's going right. on. This is, in terms of what stress can be, the the worst kind of stress you can have. Yeah. Something, you know, well, is wrong with your family. As a man, you're not able to fix it yet. It's a horrible amount of stress on you. That's why I am seriously taking this fucking state that you're in serious. And I okay. really want uh, to take you, walk you down the hall, have a little talk with management, and see if we can't... At some point, find some kind of help for you. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you're going to go to four ones like Fez. Right. Um, it's an option. M Mike oh. in D.C., you're on Fez. Yeah, what I want to know is why is that, that Fez was so quiet the whole time, Ron, you were talking to Dave about his problems of the morning. Obviously, Dave's having some issues, but he's dealing with He's worried about himself and his family. And the first thing that Fez says of note is jumping on that text message, which implies that something is amiss with, with Dave and his wife. So, Fez, don't you have any empathy for one of your coworkers, or are you mad that someone else has a problem on the show? Yes, I do have empathy, and but thank you for trying to make it about me and not about well, Dave at this why moment. Didn't thank you. Support you. your coworkers. It was the a first nice thing try, you had Mike. Say was about the text message. How do you, you know I'm not supportive? With his wife. It's terrible, How do you know? Fez. Terrible. Mike, nice try. It was an absolute nice try to try to swing it back my way when Dave's having a problem. You're an absolute idiot and an ass. So what were you doing the whole time Dave was talking through his problems when you said nothing? I was you listening no to his problems, whatsoever. you idiot. None. Here's my point. I don't think it's even helpful for Fez to help him. I think this is one of the reasons why we have managers here. When one of the employees is in this kind of state, where you were just really run down. I mean, at some point, you're going to snap and leave work or whatever. You know what I mean? It would be best for the company to go, you know, let's help before the guy gets any further along. I've had, like, a headache for, like, two weeks, too. I don't even, I take probably 20 ibuprofen a day. Like, yeah. my headache is killing me. I feel like uh, I wish I could open up like a, a coconut last night at 3 in the morning. All right, here's the thing. I'm not some retarded shrink who wants to sit there and listen to this kind of shit. You know what I mean? Okay. I feel effeminate even being this far in the conversation. My point is this. <laughs> Go wipe that stuff out of your nose. <laughs> it's just fucking pouring out of your nose. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Uh, that's all I needed. Did you get it? A, a nice little blow. Have you had the, the dog hair t tested? <laughs> that could be. <laughs> no, I'm good. This probably this probably was quite cathartic for me. Maybe I don't even need to walk down the hall. You walk on down the <laughs> hall. Here's what I worry. That you are coming to a fucking point where you're going to walk down the hall. Bam! <laughs> you get crossed. Bam! Bladder. He was like a psycho out there. Bam! You're, yeah, you're going to be shooting one after another until you run across Anthony. If they hadn't done what I told them not to do, they'd still be here. We're all going to end up in a garage somewhere <laughs> trying to figure out how everything went bad. Are you going to bark all day, Rob Cross? Or are you going to bite? I'm going to find out why we're trying to figure it out. Know that you have Rob in the trunk of your car. <laughs> well, let's go get him. Any guys ever hear K-Billy sounds of the 70s? <laughs>
It's great for when you're having a breakdown on satellite radio. By the way, the other night, we sat there having beers at the Dakota with Nice Guy Eddie. A fucking guy who looked exactly like him. Oh, really? Yeah. The great, great late Chris Penn. Oh, God, I love him. Doesn't that suck? Love Chris Penn. So one of the best characters, all-time movies, in that film. Yeah. Nice Guy Eddie. For sure. And one of the best fucking names ever. <laughs> Just the whole guy's name is Nice Guy. I remember when I first saw that movie, I was like, I didn't know if it was in the seventies or nineties, all because of Nice Guy Eddie. Yeah, it was very confusing <laughs> right? there. Like, and then something came up where they had like a cell phone or something weird. You're like, it was way big. Yeah, well, at the time that was oh, modern. Yeah, 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 right. At the time, it made total sense. Um, but you were like, what exactly is, uh, what exactly going on here? Because because <laughs> then they brought up like like a virgin. You're like, what? Yeah. And then, of course, the way they were dressed, no one really dressed in any decade no. like that until then. And now men are like, yeah, I'm going to put on a nice Reservoir Dogs <laughs> Pulp Fiction suit and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> um, here's, uh, here's John. John in Texas. You're on Run of Fez. Hey, guys. John. Hello? Yeah, go ahead, John. Hey, Dave. I know how to fix your wife's phone. What? what you got to do, I know how to fix your wife's problem. What you got to do is you got to take the SIM card and you got to take it to T-Mobile and they'll replace it. I had to do the same thing recently. Uh, I wasn't getting my wife's text messages either. You just do that and they'll fix the write-up for you. Thank you. I'm stuck in the middle with you. This, just, is, this, is all we're, uh, this is all we're worried about right now. This is, um, you ever walk across Park Avenue, Fez? This is when you get stuck in between the six lanes. We always start doing the dance of this and singing. And now I'm at the point where I try to get a little stuck. Like, I hey. Never, <laughs> I never make it all the way across. Well, it's six fucking lanes. And no real lights to, no. to say, like, there's no walking light. Mm -mm. It's always a bizarre thing. I don't expect you to talk, Rob Cross. I'm going to torture you because I like it. So you're scaring me. You're scaring me because how quickly you went from fantasy was reality for you this morning. Yeah. I don't want that to keep on happening. Okay. Well, I just think of Reservoir Dogs. It feel a lot better. Can I tell you something? Slice that fucking ear off. I loved you most of all myself. <laughs> I Just because she loved you most of all doesn't mean she loves you most. I love you even more. All right, good. Just don't text that to me. No, I don't want Tuttle to hear that, though, or else he'll come in here blazing. Or if you text that to me, make sure it arrives promptly, not a 12-hour delay, and then you don't pick up the phone for 40 minutes. I have an overactive imagination. Um, it's pretty active, that's for sure. Alan in Texas. Hey, what's going on, guys? Um... My uh, niece has the exact same problem. Took them to a thousand doctors, specialists, couldn't find anything wrong. Finally, ended up taking them to a neurologist. And a neurologist found a tumor, and uh, that affects a lot of other things that's going on right now. And he just might want to check out getting a neurologist. And my niece um, is 18 years old now, perfectly healthy, perfectly fine, living on her own. Uh, right. Th thank you very I much. I'm sure it all seems, you know, I'm sure it seems helpful. But to call someone up and say maybe it's a tumor, yeah, you got to understand. That's not He's great. On the edge. That's not great news. Get more texts from two days ago. <laughs> hey, see you at the hockey game. <laughs> Let's beat the shit out of Canada. <laughs> Who is this from? <laughs> and, and the other weird thing is, people are would will text me. Their names don't come up, even though you're in my phone. Just their numbers, right. so I don't know who's texting me. So, like, I get, like, a phone call, like, are you watching this? And I right. write, like, who is this? And it's, like, your dad. The, I don't know if I want to let this person know what I'm watching. Then my uh, dad gets insulted that I... My my brother was in the city yesterday, and he just got in his mind, I'm going to stop by. And I wasn't home, so uh, I guess he didn't have my cell number. So, um, he calls my old man. Now, my father's in his 80s, right? My father uh, tries to reach us. By sending a email to one of the the kids that just in the subject setting had help with <laughs> explanation points. 
Oh, they do and I'm like, <laughs> they oh do my God. That. And the point was, we're trying to find Ronnie to go out to dinner. They do that all the time. My mom leaves messages of, help, I need your help. And then it was, what's going on, Mom? She said, what size shoe are you? I'm like, this is why you said, David, please call me back. It's very important. You want my shoe size? 11 and a half. It's very important. Um, Brett, Boston, you're on Fez. Hey, Dave. Um, I completely sympathize with you, man. Uh, my daughter has heart disease, and it, it can just be ridiculously stressful. And the, the most important thing is just try to be as positive as possible and realize what you got. I... And, uh, you, know, you know, it's just, it's, it's tough. It's tough. Wow, this is really helpful. It's Thanks, a pick me Brett. up. A yeah, cheer up, club. Uh, I am a positive person. That's why you know these things are infrequent. But I guess you know being away from the family today made me a little bit nuts. That's well, did all. you ever even notice this in life? Um, it's okay if you could tell somebody that they're being a little too chipper, like you're being a little too up, but you can't tell them that they're being a little too down. It comes yeah. across as a negative. Yes. But if somebody's, like, bubbling around, you're like, hey, easy, <laughs> take it down. And that is acceptable behavior. Almost, and what you're basically is saying, because you're in such a good mood, you're annoying the rest <laughs> of us. And that's considered okay. But you can't say, you're groping around here and you're in such a bad mood, pick it up a notch. Well, the good mood guy is usually is in with everybody. He's affecting everybody, like whether it's his singing or his whistling or whatever it is. It is a uh, surrounding I, and intruding everybody else. I, I feel the same way about the moping guy, though. When one of the guys on the team starts moping around here, it affects the entire team. And people don't even realize, when you get to, uh, you're having like a meeting. And one guy is just like, I don't know. I guess we could take phone calls. <laughs> the next kind of meeting will go like this. We could also give out prizes. Just, it will become that contagious. Uh, yeah. That both of those things. But I don't know if a person comes in in like a really chipper mood that it can pick me up. But the guy dragging ass, uh, it'll drag me down everybody else with him. I guess we can do something. I don't know. I also think it's a little bit of laziness because, like, it's easier to bring someone down than to build someone up. So, you know, you, you, you don't have to invest as much of yourself. It's difficult to say, hey, come on, cheer up. Then if the person says, I can't. Well, yeah, that's what it is. The point is, it's okay to make good mood guy feel a little more down, but God forbid you ever tell bad mood guy... Hey, pick it up. You know, like supposedly that's what a gym teacher would say. And supposedly you have no sensitivity yeah. if you say to somebody, let's go, pick it up, you're working. Yeah. Now suddenly you might be leading to his or her depression. Well, I think with the I think the down person probably wants to be left alone. I think that's maybe why it seems more, you know, on PC. Yeah, but you want to be left. No, it's on PC because that person you expect to jump out a fucking window. And then you're the idiot who says to him, hey, your mood's affecting everyone. <laughs> Stop fucking being so self. -so like right. the whole thing of being alone, then fucking stay home. Yeah. You're in a place of work. And there's very few jobs that you don't have to interact these days. Now, let's say... Now, Dave, I didn't know what Dave went through this morning, but obviously I knew something was up because I said to him with the Ken the Movie Guy thing, you know, dude, you're, you're taking this one little thing and exploding upon it. I had no idea what state he was in, but then you went off crazy Rottweiler talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? You didn't have his morning, but you're deciding you're going to start fighting with dog people again without once making any sense or doing any background even though you've had plenty of times to do that you're just you were at dave's emotional state within seconds this thing starts to run around like a fucking head cold but and also people want other people to match their moods 
So I think most people in the world aren't chipper, and that's why it's easier for them to tell the chipper person, come on, come down to where I am. So you want most people to be in the same exact mood that no, you are. No. If you're happy, you want them happy. That's, if you're sad, you want them sad. Yeah, but I mean, that's my example for uh, most other people. I don't, right. I don't, you know, I know that there are differences but, in people. But let's even say subconsciously. Subconsciously, we would like the world to be in the mood that we're in. Yeah, I think so. I think there's some truth when, to that. When you're like in a pissed off mood, and then you're what you come home and you're like your wife like wants to like talk and shit. And right. It's like I, I it's not you, but I just you know just relax. But then also when you're happy and she's like, oh something happened today at home. You're like, come on, we had a great day. Yeah, come on, right, look at me. Go, yeah, get up. We're playing sock ball. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Everybody's <laughs> playing sock yeah. ball. I'm rolling up socks. Playing sock ball. Force her to play air hockey. Um, Dave in New Jersey, you're on my fez. Hey, um, I was thinking that uh, the best thing for Dave would be if his wife offed himself. He could get the insurance money, hire a hot nanny, take care of the kid. And, uh, oh, you're not helping. Probably... You're, you're really not helping what? at all. I know you're trying to be jokey, man. Yeah. It's... Uh, Troy, Michigan, you're on Fez. Hey, what's going on, guys? You there? Uh, Troy, what can we do for you? Uh, I just wanted to call and... Uh... I don't know, I've been a listener for about four or five years and kind of been listening to all Dave's problems and all that, and I kind of want to try to help him out a little bit if I could. Troy? Yes. How could you help? Send a little money? No, nah, it's all right. It's not going to be soliciting money. I think it's illegal. Uh, here's Bradley in Texas. Hey, hey, hey uh, Ronnie B. I was just wanted to know if there was a website or web page that anyone could go to. Maybe you have a PayPal account up there and send some donations to Dave and help him out a little bit. No, like he's uh, in trouble. Look at the people. Like, yeah, I appreciate that though. It's people very reaching nice. out to you. Very nice. It's not you know. It's it's very nice. It'd be nice if someone had like was a doctor. I mean, not. not I don't. <laughs> I don't want any medical advice. I'm just saying. I had a magical doctor come. And, and fix Stan, then we'd be in good shape. And just figure out what's wrong. That'd be step number one. A magical doctor would be great. Yeah. A guy with a wand. Maybe he even had like a little wizard's hat that said MD on it. That'd be great. <laughs> what you're looking for is Dr. Bombay. That's my doctor. <laughs> uh, we're going to break here. I like to make this about Fez's insanity and Dave's insanity. No. But something has been bothering Hicks. Hicks, what's been driving you nuts all day? There's some fucked up story coming out of Wisconsin about blackmail, Facebook, and gay sex. It's crazy. No idea what you're talking about. We'll be right back to find out. Ron and Fez show. All right, Chris Tanley, you had something on your mind today. Oh, uh, yeah. It's out of Wisconsin. A teenager, 19 years old, just got 15 years for posing as a woman on posing as a girl on the Facebook at his high school and then get conning kids into sending them pictures of their cocks. And just basically uh, hitting up all the straight guys they thought was hot. So he said to them, um, I'm a woman. Send me a picture of your dick. They did. He looked at it, enjoyed it, and now they arrested him. And what's the penalty? He's getting 15 years. But also, he then threatened to exp put out these pictures, and then he got some of them to blow them. And he banged a couple of them. And in seven and all, he was able to molest in some sexual so way. So he blackmailed. And, and gays will do this. They will blackmail you into having sex with them or exposing you. This kid in Wisconsin will do that, not all gays. But here's the, here's the problem with it. This, where are you taking this gay kid who likes gay sex? You're putting him where? In high school. Yeah, and, but I mean after he's arrested. He's going to prison. This is be really like me getting so mad at Dave, I sent him to a Filipino fuck, fuck camp. Uh, you're not penalizing this kid. Why, All right. why were these kids so scared to get a picture of their cock out, but that they'd actually blow him and in like a bathroom? Like The kid was just a fucking maniac. There's something about the gays that they have no problem having sex in a men's room. That This kid, this 19-year-old Wisconsin kid, he has no problem with that. But every time you hear one of these stories, Fez, it's like a, with the Rottweilers. It's the same exact thing. All right, send me Eastside Dave back in. Because uh, the Eastside Dave um, is the only member of the Ron and Fez show ever to have a homosexual experience. Although, we have hope that at least by this time next year we can say the same. Here's uh, Stress Boy back. Dave, how you feeling? You okay? I feel a little bit better. Any more scary fantasies while you're away? <laughs> no. no. Now, 
you uh, masturbated with a tranny. Yeah. You thought it was a woman, but yes. after you saw her penis... Pulled the penis out midway. You pulled it out? No, she did. Okay, she pulled it out. At that point, I think we got to start calling her he. Now, when you saw the penis masturbating, you were masturbating, too? Yes. No, um, she was helping me jerk off. All right, so she was jerking you off. She starts yeah. to jerk off her penis. Exactly. When you saw her penis... I was come standing there with my hands on my arms. Like, like, like Superman. Like Superman. <laughs> yeah. They were in a Superman stance. Faster than a speeding bullet. Um, I wish. Did you say to yourself, wait, I... Because this is the same exact story that happened to these kids. They thought they were doing something with a woman and it was just another crazed homosexual yeah. attempting a rape. Now, once you saw her penis, did you say to yourself, I've been duped, time to cut the losses and get out of here? No, I decided it felt good while I was disgusted that another penis was so close to mine, a mere two or three centimeters. I decided, well, she's doing a good job of jerk, or he's doing a good job of jerking me off. So I'm just going to try and jizz, and then I'll get be. And then after I jizz, I'll pick up my pants and be like, "That was fucking gross." So what happened next? Well, actually, she, I couldn't complete, but she then jizzed all over me in my pants and stomach. All right. Um, and then when she jizz, she pulled her pants off. Here's the thing: I don't want you to wash up now. I'm going to have somebody come in and take some tests, and I so I can't let you wash yet. And we're also going to take pictures of your bruises. I disapproved of the whole situation, but... Out loud? No. Okay, so inside. Your inside voice was screaming. Your outside voice was moaning. It wasn't even screaming. <laughs> it was just quietly saying, you shouldn't be this doing this. This is wrong. <laughs> now, but outside, you just kept right on moaning? Yes. Now... It felt good. The person knew how to do a good hand job. What do you want me to say? Is that something that you will bring back in your mind? No. During sex... Including the night that your children were conceived. <laughs> never have is it popped into my mind. Not jerking off. Not sex. Never. Well, I, in your mind, when you hear what this uh, gay did to these other kids, and now he's getting fifteen years in jail for it, are you happy to hear that? I mean, it, the gay person shouldn't have done it. But I'm not even sure, to be honest with I you. I don't know if you can be blackmailed into having sex. Yeah, like, I'm not sure how how these kids, you know, these kids did it. Let's suppose this. Uh, someone finds out something about you, Dave. And then they say, you have to have sex with me or I'm telling. <laughs> I still see that as choice. Yeah. Yes, I of still course. feel like you have a choice and you've made a gay choice. I don't know if you can rape somebody through circumstance. Yeah, like I agree. That. It's, you know, and David Letterman showing, you know, you can just go to the authorities. So did Rick Pitino. I wouldn't f just have gay Yes, sex. exactly right. Just because somebody has uh, so-called embarrassing information on you, the way that you can really defend yourself is by saying, Fuck you and everything that you asked for. Yeah, I, I wouldn't do that. I would not. Even do though it. you have had gay sex, I haven't had gay sex. I had a tranny jerk me off. That's while sex. while masturbating on you. Correct. That's a sexual act. Into you said your stomach, stomach, and then you uh, and, pants. and and crotch, and then you had to pull your underwear up over someone else's <laughs> semen. Yeah, that all happened. Yeah, were you there? <laughs> no, but. <laughs> Um, I'm only telling this story to humiliate you in public, so okay. I don't want you to take it the uh, uh, the wrong way. Um, here's uh, Davy. Davy, you're on the Run Fest show. Yeah, I just wanted to say these gay kids are always acting up. You never know what's going to happen with them. They're unruly. We should just ban all of them. Like, I mean, why not just get rid of them? Um, good point, Josh. Josh in Sacramento, you're on Run Fest. <laughs> Dave, you're so gay. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Good comeback. Good uh, comeback. It's not hey. an insult. <laughs> I, know, I know. Hey, you got to go back and listen to uh, Fezzi's little uh, Jan Brady impression there. He was going in and out of the voice like ten times. What, what voice was he going to? Because I honestly had other stuff to do. 
Uh, I don't know. He was just going like, er, er, I'm Jam Brady. Er. At one time, I, I thought... I don't recall saying er I at heard, any point, Jeff. At one time, I did, I did hear a Chinaman. You're like, hey, Masha, what are you talking about? Um, here is, uh, let's go to Matt. Matt, you're on the Run of Face show. Hey, what's going on, Ronnie? Yeah. Hey, uh, what's the difference between a uh, pit bull and a gay gentleman, uh, posing on Facebook? I don't know, what? Lipstick. Lipstick. Sarah Palin joke. I don't get it. He, uh, Sarah Palin's famous joke was, what's the difference between a hockey mom and a pit bull? Lipstick. Now, if I would have said that, wouldn't she act like I was calling her a dog? It's a weird thing to say. What if I said, what's the difference between a hockey mom and ass lips? Lipstick. <laughs> you can get away with anything now. <laughs> All right, what's the difference between a pit bull and Davy Mac? I don't know. You can't jerk off into a pit bull's underpants and then pull it back up <laughs> over his, his nipples. After the guy came on his crotch, he took Dave's underpants and pulled it right up to his armpits and made him stand there in it. Well, I was disappointed that the guy just instantly stopped <laughs> jerking me off. Sure. Once he jizzed, he was like, okay, I'm out of here. Hey, You're disgusting. And consider it. Girls have to put up with that all the time. No. But then afterwards, the guy said, um, or the woman, whatever, said, Make me a sandwich. <laughs> You want some twelve-year-old pussy? I'm like, what I do? <laughs> That's what's terrible. By the way, twelve-year-old pussy is what she calls her <laughs> asshole. <laughs> um, Don't ever go in the Bronx. Here is Rudy in Chicago. Rudy, you're on Manifest. Hi, buddies. Yeah. Hey, Ron. Sitting in Molly's right now. Is enjoying, that right? Enjoying a fabulous Ron Bennington, and I'm liking it so much that I've decided to uh, buy one. For the next person who comes in the door and screams Ron and Fuzz. That's a very exciting proposition. Uh, Rudy in Chicago, willing to buy cupcakes. It's very funny that you would be, bring that up, Rudy, because walking through the door is HTG and Mike Kaka. Come on in, guys. It has been a while. Now, by the way, I don't know whether you heard this yesterday, Mike. Uh, we ran the um, video of Boom Boom. Right. Uh, the excitement <laughs> about getting her on the Food Network. Pepper Hicks, gigantic crush on her now. Oh. As well as Tranny Lover, our own East Side Dave. <laughs> Both of them like tattooed love girls. Well, she is yep. single. Oh, Pepper. I'm married <laughs> currently. I'm well, taken. Didn't you say that your wife killed herself after no. today? <laughs> that was no. earlier this morning. That was a miscalibration on my part. <laughs> <laughs> um, no. What was the calibration Yours supposed to be? <laughs> But I do have uh, Come On My Tattoo 1 and Come On t My Tattoo Volume 4. So uh, I do love the tattoo porns. Are you talking about your tattoos? <laughs> no, they're, they're actually. When you said porns. I do have Come On My Tattoo, I bet <laughs> from the tranny? No, that's the name of the, the pornographic films. So that's how much you like tattoo girls? Yes. Mm. Joanna Angel and whatnot. Mm. Why don't they just call it dirty under the skin? <laughs> <laughs> it's not uh, dirty. I, uh, I've interrupted you. Oh, um, sorry. So, you have a big announcement to make, and there's some kind of a protest that you're... What are you two trying to do? Get no, ONA back on the air? Nobody has to break anything. Okay, are you time. sure? I swear. All right. Uh, big announcement to make. Go ahead and give it to us. Well, Molly's is sick of uh, being ignored for being in the middle of the country, for being a place where the airplanes won't stop. We, we've went over this before. The top... Cupcakes. They left out the Ron Barrington, right. which is easily, and this is not me bragging, Fez, mm -hmm. but easily the most famous cupcake in the country today. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. the, by the single name. So for that to not make the top five, I thought it was because it was a Midwestern prejudice. It's a crime, and it is. You you have to be on one of the sides of the, one of the coasts for anyone to pay attention. The elite media, as I like to call them, the liberal bias media. Yeah. All right, so, uh, and I know because I'm in that, and I'm also prejudiced against the middle of the country. So in order to get the Ron Bennington Cupcake, the recognition it deserves nationwide, Molly's is coming to New York. Whoa! Whoa! No way! Yes, very, yep. very exciting. Woo! Yep. Very, very exciting. Can I help you with the permits a little bit? Yeah. Uh, my friend Solera handles permits and is the best at it. Well, she's the best. That's what Molly's wants. All right, perfect. 
Let's go with Solera. She'll do it. She'll get the job taken care of. Would you call her? Because I know you called her today when you thought your wife was dead. Yeah, I'll <laughs> call her. I'll call her again and say, boy, I made, I made a mistake. Yeah, did you ever let Solera know sorry. everything was all right? I forgot to call her. Back. Sorry, telling you that Casey killed herself. A little embarrassing. Whoops. She did damage. Yeah, Solera can get on this whole thing for us and get this rolling along. Um, uh, do you know that there's also already a famous cupcake place in that neighborhood? Oh, no. Yeah. So we got to take them down a peg. I'm not worried. It won't be that hard. Uh, you know, the other thing great about that neighborhood is a lot of tour buses roll through there. Mm. Yeah. Is Boom Boom coming uh, east or are you getting a new chef? <laughs> she is going to come east, I believe. Wow. <laughs> A boom, 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 boom. That's the reason to go. A boom, 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 <laughs> boom. Not the only reason. Um, they just pushed this over to me, for, uh, Dave. They're going to have alcohol there. You'll be able to get cold beers oh, and cupcakes. Oh, I'm coming to clap for that. <laughs> you know? So what we could always do is the come drink and eat cupcakes with Dave. <laughs> A little nervous. Every Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Every Friday. <laughs> what kind of drinks? Beer like or just beer? Or? Yeah. Beer and wine, right? Well, first of all, you can't have cocktails under any circumstances. What? Why not? Have you started on the place yet or just... We signed the lease uh, a week ago, so now we are getting all the permits ready. We just will... got the key. So you haven't started working on that yet? No, not yet. So Spandy, you can relax. Yes, yeah, Spandy is in... Give, Wally, give my friend Wally a call. I'm going to give you his number, too. All right. to Spandy's been driving me nuts for months, saying, Molly's is coming. When's Molly's coming? And It's like if you're not pregnant yet and you're trying to have a baby, you don't announce you're having a baby. I would never tell Spandy anything. That was the- <laughs> Lady Cupcakes! <laughs> Hell, Cupcakes! Uh, Fez came up with a good point yesterday, though. Do uh, you think there's a lack of maple syrup in the world? Yes, and we ended. It just doesn't get used enough. You, we ended the show yesterday with. Well, you were fresh enough. Yeah, he was very frustrated, uh, and he goes, "It's only used on two things: maple syrup, what, pancakes, and French toast." And then we had to what? remind you waffles. Yeah, I forgot the waffle. waffles. Yeah. People, uh, lots of people use it on oatmeal. It can go on oatmeal. Sausage. For, uh, sausage. Dave does. I brought up scrapple. Uh, it is used for a lot of different breakfast purposes, but you thought it should be used where? Toast and bagels as well. <laughs> well, they do actually already do. They make maple syrup. They use maple syrup to make a butter, like a maple butter that people use on their toast. Not good but enough. To actually, no. pour the syrup. The consistency. It's too hard. You want to knife and fork your bagel? No, I think if you just put enough of it on there, I mean, you. Well, could... then why don't you pick up a pancake or French yeah, it toast? It just goes pouring right off the sides. Totally. Now, have you ever been to McDonald's has those pancake things that have little uh, things of syrup inside of them that you bite into them and then they explode? Yeah. Oh, the yeah. McGriddles. Yeah, it is. Delicious. No, no, that's that's completely inconvenient. You don't you, you don't put so, ketchup on toast. Uh, here's the thing. Everyone you, loves ketchup. Wow. You, you, you bring what? this up, but why don't you try it? Why don't you just put it on your toast? Well, it's a, it was something that I had thought of while having a pancake, and I but didn't, you didn't have a toast with me to think of it, to do it. So, in all this, you didn't have any toast today? No. So, what do you want to do? You want to sit down and pour syrup on your toast, and then eat it? Yeah. I think you're free to do it. Do you put everything else that you like on toast? Is there a reason why you think toast is the place that if something's good, it should go on toast? No, I thought toast and bagels why were part of the bread family, right. well, along with a pancake mm. and a, like, uh, you know. See, I said I don't see a pancake as bread, do you? Wheat-based. No, and, it's wheat-based. The whole it's thing with bread, condiments though. is... It's a baked good. There are certain <laughs> foods that a condiment goes well with. You don't just put it on for the sake of eating the thing right. itself. You don't, you don't drink want, maple syrup. Right, just because something is a condiment, you have mustard, you don't necessarily put it with tuna fish. Exactly. Well, some people do. Ugh. I know, it's disgusting. Some people... Or disgusting. But I like mustard you, with hot you dogs. You put it on the things that Ew. it complements. <laughs> oh. So, 
What? French toast. What's wrong with French toast? He could, said French toast. All right. No, French toast, melt butter, and then put sugar on top of it. Much better oh, than great. syrup. Oh, the powdered sugar? Really How about good? cinnamon? No, not powdered sugar. Cinnamon toast. Cinnamon's okay, but you, I like the sugar. With, oh, only over melted butter. You that that, sh- that that thicker sugar that they, yeah. it's like it, they get it crunchy and they toast yeah. it up a little under the broiler. Oh, that's the best way to that's have French toast. That's the best way. But, Fez, here's the point. You can put, you can have any food you want. What is this demand that society follows you, even <laughs> though you haven't uh, tried it yet? Because normally you like to say, "Well, in our part of the country, <laughs> we do this," but you have to do it yourself or get some people. You just don't <laughs> suddenly find this point in life of, "Hey, everyone, <laughs> why the hate for syrup?" See, I'll go back to this. I don't think you want every single meal that you can have for breakfast. No. To be syrup based. Well, and I also, I, I, not that it matters, but I have a feeling you're not even eating the maple syrup. You're having that corn syrup that they make flavor. Well, like whatever maple. comes, you know, from the diner. Yeah, See, he, he that doesn't, doesn't have anything at home. You don't want to add that to anything unless you need it. So that stuff's disgusting. First of all, not only this, he doesn't make toast at his own home. As he's making this statement to the world, yeah. he's never made toast. But that's why you won't have it because you wouldn't want to order toast with Do syrup. you have a toaster? No, I don't even own one. No. You don't own a toaster. No. Nope. He doesn't go into his kitchen. His kitchen is a place to keep Cokes cold. That's what it's for. <laughs> That's what Mike's kitchen is, too. Yeah. My dad gets his syrup uh, imported from New Hampshire. Well, no. it's not imported since we're all <laughs> part of the oh, same right. country. But here's the question I have. It's just ported. If it's going to be syrup talk, are you supposed to have syrup if you keep it in your house, room temperature or in your fridge? It's a big debate. That it's, is a gigantic a debate, debate about that. Um, my mom likes it room temperature, but my dad loves it cold, and they're constantly battling. You ever they ever get a divorce? <laughs> you gotta heat it up. It's it's really good heated up. I don't even like heated up. I mean, you like cold? I like it cold. In You're the always fridge. on mommy's side, aren't you? No, no that's dad's. <laughs> my my dad yeah. likes it like that. My mom heats it up. It's I think it's gross. Uh, Steve in Canada, you're on the Run of Fez show. Yeah, good day. I was just wondering what uh, location the sunglasses will reside in, or will there be a second set of sunglasses purchased? Interesting question, Mike. The uh, sunglasses go where I go. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Now, where are you going? Uh, I will probably be in New York. I'm petrified Chicago is going to fall by the wayside then. I got, I got a great team. I got some of the best staff um, working around. I got Gina working most of the hours and Maggie, and they're all really good. So, and When you are there, yes. Yeah. What happens when you're not away? I uh, have my brother to make sure everything works all right. Let me just tell you something. I leave here. Every day. And the second the elevator doors close, Dave and uh, Hicks start drinking tequila. <laughs> and they just jug it. And they will work as hard as they can when I'm sitting here. But the second I'm away, it's a fucking fiesta. You have to also watch out because when Mike leaves, Maggie might get impregnated by Danny Noonan. Oh. That could ruin his chances at <laughs> the golf tournament. Here, um... Let's go over here to uh, Kim. Kim in Jersey. You're on Run of Fez. Hey, I just want to know if Fez knows that there's actually a French toast bagel, and it does have syrup, and you can put more syrup on, and it's great. Never heard of this. Well, here's the interesting thing, and I, for Fez to come up as being the king of syrup, when Fez used to pass out during the show from lack of protein, I said, I need you to eat before the show. He says, I never, ever have breakfast. He's made that statement. Yeah. You get him breakfast every day, and he tends to eat chicken for breakfast, right? <laughs> yeah. A hot dog. Meat, a definitely. hot dog. Yeah, the other day he was definitely getting a hot dog. white meat. So what gets him on this syrup high horse? <laughs> How did he become the spokesmodel of syrup, something that he apparently never has? Yeah, I never it saw. just got in my brain. It just made me think that it's like, this is a delicious condiment. Ketchup yeah. goes all over the place, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I, but not for me. I honestly think if you use too many condiments, it means the food's bad. I understand if you're going to bad food places, you want to just fill it with condiments. But if I'm going to go down and pick up a beautiful hamburger at, like, say... Um, Shake Shack. Stand in line for it. I don't want it tasting like fucking ketchup at the end of it. If I'm going to go after something great, I want it to taste great. Mm. You're not going to just sit there and pour these things all over. So the people that are throwing using ketchup three fucking meals a day, I find them disgusting. Yes, you can have an occasional ketchup. Don't get me wrong. 
But if you just, every meal tastes like ketchup to you, or every fucking time you eat food, it tastes like barbecue sauce that you just bought at the market, <laughs> you're disgusting to me. Uh, Scott, Scott in Tampa, you're on Fez. Good afternoon, boys. Yeah. Uh, Fezzy, are you forgetting where you came from? You prejudiced? What about biscuits? You don't like uh, maple syrup on biscuits? We always had honey on biscuits, but never syrup. Yeah. Mm, honey's good. Well, we have sorghum, too, but that's it's all the same thing, isn't it? I don't know how Southern Fez is. He's part Southern, he's part from Newfoundland. <laughs> well, there's a, there's a point in Florida where you're back north again, isn't there? In terms of culture? Yeah, Fez doesn't live in that place. No. <laughs> you say when you, when you think of Florida, you think of Miami. I think of Jews, yeah. Yeah. He's eight, nine mi- hours north of north. hard evergreen glade driving from where you're mm-hmm. talking about. I mean, the number of times that his family would pull over for roadkill before they would even make it to Miami. Uh, first time I met uh, Fez's mom, she was wearing a gator head on her hat. Like, it was just... <laughs> she got come on, for it. Come on in. Come how on we, in. how we dress down here. Your face is framed from work, huh? All right, I got two more sour cream uses for you. Sour cream? Two of my... Uh, sour cream. Well, there's sour? the blue one of them. Two of my maple syrup uses. <laughs> oh, I got one sour cream. Well, well, good one, Ron. Thanks. Mix it with sour cream. Yeah. It's unbelievable. And you could put it on anything, your any of your big three syrup items or, or your bagel or anything you want. And then uh, another thing is take some bananas, slice them up, put them in a little frying pan with a little um, brown sugar and maple syrup. Just cook it for a few minutes. Delicious. He's not going to cook anything. What can you tell the diner? To He's do going it? to have, he says diner, but what did Fez eat today for breakfast? Uh, he's getting them himself, so he doesn't, I don't know. What would you have today, Fizz? I was running late. I ran over and got a sausage McMuffin because I'm still on the stupid McDonald's thing. Mm, that's that's a smart idea. That's actually a, a sausage McMuffin or an egg McMuffin? Well, What's sausage the McMuffin's choice? more delicious. Egg mm. McMuffin's a little healthier, a little less fattening. No idea. What would you have yesterday, Fez? Chicken? Uh, yeah, I had the chicken yesterday, I think. Where at? Yeah. Um, I just got like a container of uh, sliced chicken meat. Sliced chicken, luncheon meat. You had that. Wait, what? Wait, what do you mean? What? What? I didn't have it on the sandwich. Sliced what? or luncheon meat? Those are different. The uh, sliced chicken luncheon meat. Like, like, like deli like chicken? Turkey. make that? <laughs> turkey, you I've mean. never even heard of chicken. Only being turkey made comes made like sliced. That. Like no, that. they have chicken. They have it in chicken. I've never heard of that in my life. That doesn't chicken seem in right. a deli? <laughs> so it's a pressed chicken? Sliced like into slices? Like turkey roll? Yeah, like the slices that you would put on a sandwich. I just didn't have the bread. But you get that in turkey. You don't yeah. get that in chicken. <laughs> Not you chicken. get that in chicken. I can't imagine. So how much did you order? <laughs> I just got, um, I don't know what it was. I got one container of it that was already container. pre-cut. Container? Three pounds? <laughs> pre-cut. Is it Can I have market? a pre-cut container of sliced chicken meat? We're in crazy town. <laughs> I think he means turkey, and he just doesn't know. <laughs> Where did you get it at? At the uh, grocery store by my house. So you walk into the grocery mm-hmm. store in the morning, uh huh, and you ask for sliced chicken, and then where did you eat it? No, and then I ate it. I ate it at home, but not on a, on on bread. No, just... I just ate. I wanted to get all the protein. I just ate the chicken. <laughs> he doesn't need to live. <laughs> Let me help you, Fez. He eats to die. <laughs> Let me help you. With oh, God, I'd love to see you fail helping Fez. <laughs> I enjoy so much the failures of other people after I've been through my own. Fez would be really great because for me, he's like a reef that if you like this reef that you look down and just see all these ships at the bottom. <laughs> do you know what Fez should do? He should hire Dutch one Harbor. of those... Uh, <laughs> One of those guys <laughs> will come catch. into your house, will cook a week's worth of food, put it Blow in you. little containers. I'll uh, eat it. And then you have all week to eat it. Wait, he, you mean he, you eat it all at once? Yes. He, <laughs> like a dog. What, <laughs> what was the thing <laughs> What was the thing that your sister signed you up for? Fresh Direct. I Fresh Direct. And right. what they did is exactly what you said. They prepare him. Here's your Monday breakfast, right. your Monday lunch, your Monday <laughs> dinner, your Monday snack. And how long did your first week last you? <laughs> Two days. <laughs> Al, if that, I mean, and that's three meals now t- and snacks, and then his, then he was empty, and this was after the heart attack. <laughs> I don't. Th- I mean, dogs will do that. You can't leave out right. a bag of dog food. They will literally eat till they hit mm-hmm. the bottom of the bag. But I, 
<laughs> now, did you say to yourself, it's Tuesday morning, here I am eating Thursday night's dinner, I'm fucking up. Oh, I said it the whole way. <laughs> I said it the... So what did you think that would happen? That... Did you think to yourself, I'll just take a couple days off from food? <laughs> I'm like, well, I guess I'll have to replace this myself. But it's like, and it's... Now, did you ever get around to telling your sister why you couldn't do it? <laughs> did you ever admit the truth that you just ate it all? I think I told her that, yeah. yeah. I, have, I have a solution. I'm you pretty sure. You freeze it all, and then you only defrost 24 hours ahead. He eats one frozen. <laughs> he eats it straight out. He I'll wait it out. When he gets... <laughs> I was putting what as I was eating one meal, I was putting another one in. And here's the other thing that he does. As soon as he gets a hot pizza, he puts it directly into the freezer. <laughs> and what that does is melt everything else in his freezer. <laughs> That's, I thought that's twos were right. bad because we'll talk about the next meal that we're going to eat while we're sitting at one. But you, you actually I'm start defrosting it. Well, the defrosting next it, yeah. What what Fez <laughs> does is doesn't even taste the meal that he's eating. Oh, he's in a hurry. For some reason, he's in a hurry. Here's uh, Jimbo in Iowa. You're in front of Fez. Hey there! Congratulations, yeah. Mikey. Good thing to be there in New York. And Fezzy, you can also put cottage cheese, up, oh, syrup on cottage cheese. Ew. It's badass, believe me. What, uh, what's your problem myself. with the cottage cheese, Fez? I just don't like the texture of it. It's too uh, vomity. Maybe you'd like some tapioca pudding. Ew. Yikes. It's not or bad. how about rice pudding? Oh, I love that. That's your all-time favorite, right? Yeah, that's the best dessert ever. Yeah. I wish that was that. Oh, a rice pudding cupcake. We have a really good rice pudding one. Uh, one of my chefs made. So oh, I would. Oh, rice pudding nice. itself. Yeah, or, fantastic. I Michelle love, makes it. Oh, I must love, be five star then. Yeah. So good. Dave believes it to be five star. Yeah, um, it's the best dessert. By the way, here's uh, my new annoyance in life, and these are people I can no longer stand. If they see me with a cigar and say it like this to me, "Is that a Cuban?" <laughs> <laughs> a guy did it the other night. He goes like, "Is that a Cuban?" I go, "No." He goes like, "Yes, hey." Cubans are the best. <laughs> I'm standing outside a fucking bar. I'm not going to be smoking a fucking Cuban. You don't smoke cigars at all. You heard the word Cuban. Why don't you walk over to a per person with a Ford? Is that, is that a fucking uh, is that a Lamborghini Countach you got there? It's a better car, you know. Um, Fez Watley, would you like let Deb be the la latest person to work on your head? Sure. <laughs> I don't think I want to go that. Just, just your food. <laughs> How about this? We well, give her forty-eight hours before she hates you. <laughs> I give her forty-eight hours. You're going to go he through. Doesn't even have a toaster. I mean, uh, we would be starting from so far behind. You don't understand that he even thinks of, of food as germs anyway. The shopping alone. Yeah. It, well, it is germs, but you you need. I mean, you, yogurt is bacteria, and it's uh -huh. great for you. You ever eat yogurt? No, not really. You can put bacteria no. in your stomach. Great for your digestion. You'll play. It's good That's for you. That's still yogurt. It's good for you. And put some nice Despite cut up fancy strawberries. Name. Dave, you're doing sugar. so much better now from than your stressed out crying time. Yes, I feel better. Do you think you just needed a good cry? No, I just needed to release that uh, very tumultuous emotional state that I was in. Uh, Mike missed all this. This morning. I wish you would. Yeah. Oh. This morning, Dave got a text. Um, no, as he's coming to start it up. What did the text say? <laughs> the text at 8.30 on the bus said, I always loved you the most. Past tense. Oh. I always loved you the most from my wife, which oh. I found weird. Yeah. So I texted her back, well, you two, are you okay? Because the past tense got me scared. No response. And I called her then for a solid 40 minutes, and she didn't pick up the phone. Until... So I thought she had killed herself and was lying on the floor. And I really, really was this close yeah. from turning, from getting back on the bus and heading back to New Jersey. Dave. She's okay. Yeah. He the baby's maybe. Maybe. But. I mean, I've heard from her. Yeah. You still. understand that you could be in a Shutter Island situation. Yeah. I feel like I haven't seen the film yet. I plan to. You're living the film. Right. I feel like it's possible. I mean, I don't know what it's about. I what, find DiCaprio to be a great actor. So. You know, you were the, the second person to be hurt from that text, too. What, what did the text say? I always loved 
you the most. You know who got really upset from that? No. Jonathan. Oh, come on. She's listening. He, My wife's listening. <laughs> but so is Jonathan. He no, sends me Yeah, he sends me emails all the time. She's listening. That's not nice. She doesn't want to hear that. Uh, you know what I would love to get a text from Fez that said? What? I always loved you the most. <laughs> and now that could have been like this. Could it be? <laughs> Is he dead on the floor? <laughs> What'd you call? No, I'd be like this. Fez is dead. Fez is dead. All my promises are gone. Fez is dead. You have a song all set for it. Uh, if you were dead on the floor, I would immediately try to have people as my alibis. Because there's no way the police would not think that I choke you to death. <laughs> They're going to think that happened. I would uh, never. I'm going to bring this story up because, Dave, you brought it up the other day. Years ago. It was actually right after you got married. You came to work one day. No, I, had, I don't think I was married yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, you were definitely married. I was married. in Brooklyn. Uh, and you had a, you wore a hat for a day or two. Yes. And I'm going like, what the fuck is going on with the hat? And you took your hat off in shame. And you had a strip <laughs> in the middle of your head that was just shaved. Yeah. <laughs> and then I go, what happened to you? Yes. And you said, I fell asleep. My wife and HTG were drunk, and they shaved my head. Yeah. And I'm like, what kind of man are you that you, al uh, that you would allow out. this to happen? Uh, and then, of course, a lot of people wrote in about it. They were furious. And furious about you allowing yourself to be treated this way. Okay. The other day, the story comes up where I say, and HTG was sitting in here with us, and we were talking, and I said, why did you guys ever shave his head? Why did you do that to me? And she said, I didn't. I said, Casey, his own wife shaved his head. She says, no. Then we're like, who shaved his head? Who came into the home and you two allowed to shave that man's head? Razor Strangers. Boy. At that point, after almost three years now, it was admitted, Dave shaved a strip in his own head. <laughs> I don't remember. And then swore the girls to secrecy that you did it. Yeah, now, why yes. would you tell them not to tell us? I don't. I honestly, not only was I know that I was drinking that night, I must have been still drunk the next day because I don't even remember. Well, I remember I got to the office. You had the hat on, and I and you had never worn a hat. By the way, you, it looked like a little kid's hat. Yeah, so. <laughs> that was, was Beaver Cleaver. It was my Ron Howard. I'm gonna direct uh, fucking Willow hat. And I asked, what's with the hat? And you took it off, you bent your head down, and you said as sadly as possible, someone shaved my head. That could have been the first mental break. If true. And now, I did ask my wife. Yeah. Did you, come on, fess up then. What'd she say? She said it was it was definitely not her, and it was probably not Debbie. She, she said probably. <laughs> she wow. Said, come she, on. she insinuated it was me. She, she insinuated it. Yeah. Now, I, I, I tried not to tell them it was you, but you said, go ahead, tell them, you could tell them. Yeah. She, she, I think she, she, she says it was me, but <laughs> realizes that this could have been the first breakdown. Like, I may, maybe I, I do have a Tyler Durden thing. Do you realize that you're sounding like Fez now, where <laughs> you've accepted being nuts and going back it. now and repainting your past? Um, Brian in North Carolina, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, that movie you were talking about is called The Big Picture. There you and, go. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the best characters in that was played by J.T. Walsh as the uh, the scumbag uh, Hollywood uh, studio. Who likes thimbles? He, he likes thimbles. I don't know why I didn't see this. <laughs> Sounds great. That's okay. Oh. There's parts of it that are great, like Marty Short. What, I still maintain, like, outside the Christopher Guest and Spinal Tap stuff, that And God Spoke is the best uh, mockumentary. That might have been your first breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> that movie's so fucking funny, and not enough people have seen it. It's great. You shaved your own head and still don't remember. No. I mean, I tend to black out if I'm drinking heavily. I don't know why would I shave my head. I'll tell you this. I've been to a lot of AIM meetings, and I never heard anybody said, I shaved my head, and I don't even remember doing it. What was this? I'm talking about guys that killed their own kids. Why would I have <laughs> and they, they would think you were a loser. Yeah, I, I thought I thought to myself, and matter of fact, that's where I invented the term Mean Girls. 
it, it would be it's, it's something I would never ever do to pull a prank like someone on that for no I mean not because I'm all that compassionate but because I would be terrified of the revenge you seem like a pranky type of no, person no I am I, I enjoy watching a good prank but it makes me so nervous you like to I'm watch a prank waiting for the revenge to come I'm nervous for the other person and like I'm, a ZD dish I won't even away. play April, April Fool's joke cause <laughs> I always yeah, thought hold on awesome. hold so on the best you threw away uh, the ZD dish? <laughs> I didn't do it. Fez, you always thought she did it? I always, I actually, I thought it was Deb and Casey together. Did so it. did I. And yeah. that's how I got the name Mean Girls up about them. Which later, you know, you guys got offense to. And I'm like, well, if you're so offended, why are you shaving people's heads then, Deb? <laughs> yeah. Why are you I shaving people's beds? I still would like to. Yeah, that somehow- bothers me. I still would like to visit that, like, when I'm dead, that will be one of the days that I go and revisit. You swear to God you don't remember anything. I swear. So for years you thought I your swear, wife I and swear, HTG shaved your head. Yeah, I swear to God. I, sw- I swear. I swear. First I swear. of all, I don't, yeah, I don't that's remember. That's impossible. But why would, it, why would you assume it's someone did it to you? Because what fucking sense would that make if I would well, shave sense? it into my head? Well, what sense would two women, one of them your wife, to just shave a strip in your head? I thought they were drinking too, and maybe they were like, this would be funny, we'll but put you a strip n- in his head. You never asked about it at home? You he just, doesn't bring things up. You just assume someone shaved your I head and you didn't apparently try to find I'm, out who? He assumed his I'm wife gonna... killed himself today because she didn't pick up the phone. <laughs> so she was no. hanging herself like boner. <laughs> There's a half an hour went by. <laughs> oh, I didn't know the time. Yeah, then, yeah. yeah, I would assume the same thing. Half an hour is a long time. Half an hour? And half an hour like the last half hour? Mm-hmm, yeah. All right, nobody saw Ishtar. I'm the only one. Mm-hmm. I saw it years ago. I cried at the end because I'd spent money to see it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that might have been your first breakdown. I've had a many. I mean, I, I probably had a breakdown when I ran away at the age of 24. Yeah, that's not running away. That's just um, <laughs> leaving. I'm leaving because there that's was... That's called traveling. You know, and I, <laughs> I ra- ran away because there was too many dishes. <laughs> I didn't want to do them. Dave, I told you I'm going to walk you down the hall and have management take care of you. All right. That was crazy. Then I think about it. All the stuff with you is a little crazy. Yeah, Maybe right. be ready. Do you think you could go to Four Winds for a while? No, I'm, I have two kids. I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm, I, I am going to go home and play with my children. All right, let me ask you this. What would be easier for you to do? Go to the Nut Hut at yeah. Four Winds or take a gun, put up your head and pull the trigger? <laughs> um, it would be easier with the gun. No. It's a lot simpler. You don't have to travel. Good boy. Good boy. To drive all over, and I don't need someone to pain. Someone telling me get up, get up. Let's go to group or whatever they do. Paint some stuff. I bet you can play baseball with Mickey Mantle in heaven. I would, if I (laughs) given the chance. Who are you talking to? The person who's telling (laughs) me to kill myself. I wouldn't mind playing with the Mick. I think I could hold my own against anyone. Before 1950. Like, if you put me in 1932, I could hit 300. How f- oh, Hicks has now played this music for you. <laughs> how, how? Medication time. How hard could those guys have possibly thrown? Uh, I don't think you could hit as good as Hank Greenberg, but excuse me for saying that. <laughs> I just look over <laughs> the mental hospital music playing. <laughs> Dave's already in his socks. <laughs> <laughs> My boots Only are these, very... Yes. It's a little bit Remember the other day he was screaming that he can't find his boots. So he goes, where's my shoe? I go, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> then he yells at me. First of all, he says, where's my shoe? I go, I don't know. He goes like this. I need it. My son is choking. I go, dude, I don't... <laughs> I don't know what you're <laughs> screaming about. I need my shoe. My son's joking. <laughs> there was snow on the ground. I couldn't hop home. It's fucking hopscotch, for Christ's sake. At four wins, they'll take the laces and the belt. <clears throat> I don't wear belts. So it, it, no you problem. know what, Fez? And the jaw, a drawstring if you have any sweatpants. Here's the thing. I'm happy. I'm a happy person. Were you happy today? No. When you thought that... Your whole family tried to catch up with a meteor that I was heading they back down. <laughs> I, I thought it was more of a Jonestown thing. Do me a favor. Don't, so- don't fucking step on a laugh like that when I get it. Just fucking right. let it milk. Okay. Let it thunder back and forth. 
I'm only getting it on one side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it to you, but you were talking about my family mass killing themselves. And oh. help up! <laughs> Thank you, Fez. And I'm, only, I'm not talking about that, but just the fact that you would assume that, that you couldn't reach them. That was the funny part. No, it was the combination of the text. And I think then. it's the most logical line of thinking. The Sunday night, had. we're having the big Oscar party. We are going to be live. Dave, no Oscar party for you. No, I'd stay, love to come. Stay home. Relax. Mm-mm. I'd love to come. <laughs> we can't have you here. <laughs> it's a Sunday. It'll just add to the stress. Even after uh, today, maybe we can come up with uh, even a solution that'll help. <laughs> but anyway, Sunday night. Now, at the same time, Fez, we'll be playing uh, uh, trivia. Her, search, search, hurry up and search. And we'll be doing that for the 202 friends. You want to make sure you follow them. We got James Cameron stuff to give away. Wow, We've got... Um, Jackson stuff, Peter Jackson stuff to give away. My and we're going to be adding more to that as the week goes on. Now, the interesting thing is this. Fez Watley, the modern-day Nostradamus, you were saying that Inglorious Bastards could sneak in there. Yes. Um, there was some talk for a while, Hurt Locker taking this. The heat that is against Hurt Locker right now, including military people, who are now saying this is a ridiculous scenario set up. It doesn't happen that way. Now, having said that, the World War II thing didn't happen the way Tarantino. I don't think that you need a true movie or else yeah. then you'll have a documentary. Die Hard doesn't happen the way, you know what I mean? You can't be a cop and do what John McClane does, but we enjoy watching that. So I don't know, does it hurt the chances for you? I'll ask you two first, Crazy Dave. I think that... Um I can't see a woman director not winning this for the first time. I think Yeah, we got that. We 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 all agree with that. Well, I think that Hurt Locker is a entertaining film. Mm -hmm. It's not as good as Inglorious Bastards though. Mm. Just on a film by film basis, you know, punch by pound by pound. Not as good. Punch by pound? Pound by pound. But that's not what I'm talking about. Does it hurt you that it's not done the way it would be done in no. the military? What about for you, Hicks? It doesn't hurt me, but I think it's definitely going to affect the people who are voting for Oscar. Because I think they're idiots, and that will sway their... I don't know whether vote. it's the, the music or your hair down, but you look like Big Chief to me today. <laughs> what the fuck? I thought I'm going nuts! He's already playing you McMurphy are. music. I was going to offer him some fucking gum. Juicy fruit. Jesus Christ. It's going to move you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah well. I, can, I can move an island in it. I can move God an God damn it, Chief. You fooled him. You fooled him all. Juicy fruit's really good. Juicy fruit. <laughs> Chief, let's go to Canada. Fez, did you feel like that when you were in the nut hut? Um, uh, there was a lot of times when when you can't move around freely. Yeah, then you feel so much like a nut. I know just how crazy you are when you got back of the nut hut, and the, I know that instead of trying to get better there, you just lied to them about how well you were. To escape, I started panicking and about not to get out, but not being able to get out. What, uh, he called me at home, and I uh, I took a vacation with him, and I go like this: I won't go away, because he said to me before he went to Nut Hut, "Do not go away." And I go, I won't. I'll be right here. He calls me the first night. I can't fucking handle it. They won't let me out. I go, I'm on my fucking way right there. Then he starts getting me in the... I'll kick the fucking doors of that place in. <laughs> I turn into Owen Wilson within seconds. <laughs> Dig me. Wasn't he getting out anyway? Yeah, he did. He was. Nothing to fucking... It was... Breakout. The thing is, it was me talking to a crazy person and just trying to make sense out of them instead of just saying you're nuts. Well, they had, they, Owen Wilson was just getting out, too. Well, they had just gone over the thing when oh, I look. got there. Oh, right. Of, um, you know, we'll hold you for 72 hours. Still in the family. Sure. If you want to leave. They, they get 72 no, hours time frame. Fezzy, no, uh. no offense, I can't be part of Nutty Talk. <laughs> I already got Dave to worry about. But I can't be acting like it's natural. <laughs> um, my only point was, Fez went to the Nut Hut for a week and never once told them any things that were bothering him. He just acted like he was great. Yeah, but he got to play kickball and make things paint. with popsicle sticks. Yeah, he painted. it. And paint. Then he was bragging. None of the... They told him to plant flowers. The people go, we're not going to do it. And he just kept doing it. goes, because I didn't want them to hold anything against. I'm like, maybe your problem 
is doing everything that you're told <laughs> without thinking about it. Maybe a sane person would say, I'm not fucking feeling well. Planting flowers is not why I'm here. Right. What? Why Just constantly going? going along with what you're told doesn't make you sane. That makes you a Russian. <laughs> <laughs> and patience, here's a weed whacker. Go ahead. They wouldn't give you a weapon. They're just making you garden, though. Four winds, an old age home, and kindergarten are exactly the same thing. It is. <laughs> and I remember in kindergarten going you know, like this. I don't want pain all over my fucking <laughs> fingers. I now, I don't it. understand why we're here all day. There's a TV, and you won't turn it on. <laughs> <laughs> the ball game is on. In the cooler, <laughs> we watch the World Series, or we fucking riot. No, I'm not leaving until I watch this game. Mac? Mac? Go fax winds up. The chief raised his hand, Mac. <laughs> there you go, chief. <laughs> go ahead, raise your fucking hand. Raise your hand up, chief. We'll get to watch baseball. Raise it up. There is no better comedy, uh, buddy comedy, than Nicholson and the chief. Everything they did. They were playing 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 basketball. Right. I want to go home and watch it right yeah. now. Put it in the back. You're going to count this guy? <laughs> And you always have Danny DeVito in the background just Martini, peeking around the corner. So great of a character. It's the best. When he just put the fucking house in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> fucking sitting there with the house in his mouth. You know what was great, too? And when they broke the cigarettes in half because he wanted to do a nickel bet. Yeah. How <laughs> about how, how fucking great the black orderlies were in that? That they would just have their sticks. Yep. Just be fucking with those guys. Yeah. You're crazy as fuck. Your you ain't getting coming. out of here till we yeah. say you're getting out. Right, if you coming. watch it, when Max starts calling the ball game, mm -hmm. pause it, and you just see Danny DeVito's nose peek around the corner <laughs> with oh, his yeah. best yeah. expression on his face. Because he had just gotten up from bed. <laughs> and they rocked the shit out of that bench. Oh, yeah. They just, the thing's moving oh, back Jesus and forth. Jesus Christ, uh, a fucking game like that is going on? You're going to fucking lose it. That, that part's inspiring. That it whole is. fucking Mickey Mantle shit. But you, I, weren't, you weren't going to see Mac out there fucking planting and paint, water painting and doing no. what he's told? He's trying, to, he's trying to pick up the water fountain. You guys text him back and forth. This place sucks. No. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you want... Is this secret? It's probably, probably secret. See, yeah. And then the black guy, one of the black guys, was then in The Shining with Nicholson. People always forget that. Wow. Yeah, I think that's a lock, dude. I watched the other ones. I don't even yeah. think it's going to be close. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Thank God they haven't tried to remake that or do some fucking What's that? sequel. Oh, why did you even say that? Cuckoo's Nest. You just put that idea out into the universe. Who would you put playing McMurphy? Right now? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. I'd put I Jack get, Nicholson no, right back in. No, I'm this age. <laughs> I'll put Jack as one of the old guys with a shaved head standing in the back. Ah, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'd, I'd get the Jeremy Renner speaking of Hurt Locker. I'd oh, get the please. Hurt Locker. He's a very good actor. If I didn't love Jeff Bridges so much, I would say he should get best actor. I would use uh, Mr. Brad Pitt in that role. Tyler Durden style Brad Pitt. Well, 12 Monkeys Brad Pitt. He's got the presence, but... Doesn't seem dirty enough for Who's McMurphy. Gonna be the, who are going to be the crazy people? There's no reason you can't bring Devito back. And what about Nurse Ratchet? There's no. Nurse I don't think there's Ratchet. Anyone Diaz. Uh, maybe could Meryl. Cameron pull Diaz. It off? Meryl Streep. She could do anything. Would be great. <laughs> yeah. uh, Cameron Diaz. Don't waste our time. <laughs> but you know, like Louise Fletcher was kind of an unknown when that yeah. happened, and much younger than you would think at the time. I think she was in her twenties. <laughs> yeah, it was something really ridiculous. Right. Everyone just decided she's old because right. of that movie. <laughs> like, uh, what? Anne Bancroft was only 35 in The Graduate. Anne Bancroft was like two or three years older than right. Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> they should have been having sex. It should not have been a problem. But it's the way we look at women. You know who turned down that role in The Graduate? I'm going to. I'm going to probably guess your older brother. No. One Patrick, of your life stories. Patrick Din, Charles Grodin. I think there's a possibility that. He turned. I read his book. He said it was one of the biggest mistakes he's ever made. Hold on, you read a Charles Grodin book? Yeah, I like the Charles Grodin. Well, you know, the thing is, um, Hoffman, that book was written, it was written for like a Robert Redford type. It was supposed to be the all-American boy, yeah. comes back from college, it wasn't supposed to be a little neurotic Jewish guy. <laughs> um, 866 Ron, uh, Ron Fez, here's uh, Rob. Rob, you're on the Ron Fez show. Hey, buddy, Sam. Yeah. 
So uh, where does Shia LaBeouf fit into the uh, Cuckoo's Nest remake? God, nowhere, I hope. <laughs> Please, no. Please, for the love of Christ, no. He's, he's the it thing, man. I, Come on, uh, where's, where's he's the, 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 he's the it thing or the shit thing? Yeah. Too young. There's no it. There. It's not even that. He's too young, and that's well, the problem we'll Hollywood's to, making. Let's judge him after Wall Street. Now, we got a break here uh, when we come back. And by the way, this is the great kind of stuff you'll be hearing during the Oscar party Sunday night. Um, when we come back, we'll all be eating cupcakes. Oh, you didn't bring us any, huh, Mike? Oh, no cupcakes? But weren't we going to have the blue <laughs> He did. The he brought them, bring and, them. and he, he lost them. <laughs> he lost our cupcakes in the airport. I put them down and forgot about them. Do you realize that you can't leave anything behind <laughs> the airport? Know, these days? We're going to see that something got shut down, some terminal. <laughs> I've told him now I won't even let people bring laptops into this building. <laughs> That's my newest role. I started that yesterday. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, it's the Ron and Fez Show. Back with the Ron and Fez Show on a Tuesday, 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ. That's 866-RON-ZERO-FEZ or Fez at AOL.com. Tomorrow will be an mass with Harry Shearer's special guest. If you can be in Manhattan at 3.30 here at the Sirius XM Studios in New York, uh, Twitter at 202 Friends, and let us know that you can be part of that audience. Seating is limited, but that's going on tomorrow, 3.30. So let us know on 202 Friends. Um, story out of Virginia Tech, where they're going to start um, calling the students' parents even for minor infractions. So it's college students, and if something as little as a beer is found inside the dorm room, the parents are being called. It seems like it takes a whole lot away from what the college experience is supposed to be. And what about the kid who's paying for his own college tuition? Does his parents still have to get called? He's, put, he's an adult. He's putting himself through there. That doesn't even make sense because when I was in high school, once you turned 18, that was like the magic moment that they couldn't call your parents on anything anymore. They had to deal with you one on one. And you could sign your own notes that, you know, Debbie was late for school today because she had a doctor's appointment. So you had actually said, but you had to talk about yourself in the third person? Yeah, it was really great. I wrote my own notes all the time. It, if you didn't turn 18 in high uh -huh. school, you felt like you really missed out on something. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it is the Ron and Fez show. Uh, Chris Stanley, you were in school, kicked out how many times? Uh, multiple. Uh, well, I was expelled for life from uh, SUNY Purchase, and uh, I was constantly in trouble there, constantly. But just SUNY Purchase, not the other SUNYs? Uh, no other SUNYs, no. But expelled That's the weird life. thing. You think you had been part of the whole state university. No, I was still able to go to, like, say, New Paltz, Binghamton. I was still welcome there, but SUNY Purchase, no, I rested if they found me on the campus. Now, what did you do that was so damn horrible, Chris? Uh, constantly, just I just got caught for every single possible thing you could think of. You know, bongs, uh, kegs, drugs, just, just constantly Now, caught. the day that they ran, finally ran you out, was that a sad day for you or you didn't give a shit? Uh, at the very end, I had to get an appeal with the vice president of the school, and he told to me that uh, I, can, I have no place being in a college. And that just really pissed me off, oh. and I uh, stormed out of his office, and I was like, fuck this shit. Fuck these assholes. And then I just got really hammered. You should have knocked some papers off his desk at it at the how, same time. How yeah, I they... think his mom deserves a call. I think he's like, like a fucking baby. How do they call themselves an educator and say something like that to somebody? It's true, though. Some people are too stupid to be educated, and he's one of them. I dropped a couple F-bombs, too, in the office before Get that. Get the fuck out of my office, you asshole. That's what I'd be saying to these people. I bet they didn't give him his money back. Uh, you don't deserve it. You put your money down, you fucking play the game. Right now, I like to treat the colleges the same way as I do in Vegas. You're kicked out of here, but your money's staying. <laughs> you got any fucking problem, I'll start digging holes in the desert for you right now. Uh, if these fucking kids are such little crybabies that they're afraid that their mom's going to get a call at age 20, fuck them, then you are a baby. Uh, Paulie Loose Pals. Paulie, why don't you come in here? Come in the big room. Paulie's a kid I watched grow up. He came up here, uh, we knew him as a kid, as a little kid when we were in D.C. Now he's moved to New York with his sister. He's up here, he wants to do something. He's walking around town in the Sonic Youth shirt. Like we're going to be impressed by your knowledge of older music. Paulie, what do you want to tell us about college? Uh, well, I actually go to Virginia Tech. Oh, really? Yeah, that's my school. Is that the shooter school? 
Uh, we have had a string of murders in the last couple of years. So they're probably trying to chill some of the weirdos out and get them out of there. Probably. I mean, every semester we have a bizarre death on campus. So you, they're, they're terrified of any bad press down You guys had the Chinese kid who went so bad shit, right? Was that you guys? Yep, that was us. And another Chinese guy cut a girl's head off last year. I didn't know what the Chinese yeah. guys in fucking college. They're under a lot of pressure. What pressure they have? There's no pressure whatsoever. Trust me. Who There's no we? pressure in college? Not, not with my major of liberal arts, no. Now, what were you hoping to do with that liberal arts? Fucking oh, work with Dave? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> that explains my liberal arts major, then. <laughs> really? What's your major, Polly? I'm a communications major. All right, so just you speaking, uh, you're going to get a, a grade for. What, what is the hope and dream that you get for your education? Well, hopefully I, I want to get an internship here, and I already did that, so I don't know what comes next. So you actually th thought to yourself, if I can go to school for four years, I can go and be work for free at a place where the guy used to let me come in when I was a little kid and sit there and watch. I mean, I want to grab you water. That's, that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Then why are we out? <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is about young people who like to keep other people refreshed. They're just like, please, can I get you anything? The little red girl was just in here minutes ago. You sure? Anything? Pepsi? Anything? Um, let's go to Tyler in Virginia. You're on Fez. Hey, how's it going, guys? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, I actually went to Virginia Tech and got in trouble for a party that I had off campus. And I guess the phone call is kind of a step up because they actually sent a letter to my parents telling them that I was in trouble. And I didn't have any affiliation with on-campus stuff. And they got me in trouble for a noise violation. Is this surprising campus. to you, uh, Polly? A little bit. It is. It is actually a really big party school. Uh huh. I mean, you, you, maybe they're trying to lose that reputation. Yeah, I guess because you can walk down the street any night and find a kegger going on. Right. So, um, maybe that's what they're against, though. Here's Eric in Virginia. You're on running Fez. Hey, Fezzy, I've got a question for you. Fezzy, uh, whose fault was it during the uh, the shootings uh, when the when the people from Virginia Tech were killed? Was it the administrator's fault or was it the student's fault? It was the shooter's fault. It was the shooter's fault. So it wasn't the the administration of the school for for not having stri uh, strict enough rules. I think there's a difference between having a mental report on some guy who is showing mental you know problems and emotional problems as opposed to. I found cigarettes in the dorm. I'm going to make a phone call. I think there's a difference there. So a person that has mental problems should be watched over and not have the same rights as everybody else. Because uh, you remember, we just a little while ago were talking about you being in four winds. And you have the same rights as everyone else. Uh, you look at a guy like Dave, he's just under the stress of what life is bringing him right now. Yes, he might come in here and shoot the place up. But won't that be a different kind of Thursday? I was never, you know, diagnosed as being a danger to anybody. But you even admitted to us that you lied about what was wrong with you when you were in there. There was things I kept from him, yes. That sounds dangerous to me. That sounds highly dangerous. And you do have a bag of your own toenails at home. Yes, I do. But I would never use them against other people. I, uh, by the way, I told my brother that story last night, and he was appalled. Out of everything else, he goes like this. He goes, I know he was bad, but I had no fucking idea he was that far gone. Out of all the shit that you've done, the keeping your toenails in a bag is the real weird you're you're nodding true That's to the hcg thing. yeah that, that i was absolutely convinced until you put the picture up that you were making it up I you thought he was lying yeah th i thought you were oh just, no you think it's, fez is a fucking liar I, there, there was no way that it was possible that was just so insane that I, there was no way it was real so what what was it about him keeping his toenails that now makes you feel like he's not fun crazy he's sick the minute off the deep end crazy because for what reason would you want to save something that one like simple that? reason put it put it up your ass later and that a way toenail? when yeah that way when you tie a tight string around your penis and you piss you knock the bag of 
of toenails out of your asshole. Gotta you just be hold on it, backs up into it. To use for that purpose. Than Paulie, toenails. you knew Fez in the DC days when he just started to go over the edge. Yeah, I was I was there the night Fezzy melted down for the first time. What, that was the night of the Mikey D party. Yep, I was there. Um, and did you think at that point that he was crazy? Well, that night it came out of nowhere. I mean, Fez he been going, he been getting a little worse ever since they came to DC, or you guys mm. came to DC. And but that night, it just blew up unexpectedly. Do you think he's ever come back from that night? I, I think there. I think Fez has improved over the last couple of years. Yeah, from the the absolute pits of when you guys first came to XM and the heart attack. Would you do this maybe for college? Write up a little report called the Weir Weird Strange Fucking Movements of a Satellite Radio Personality. I'd love to read it. <laughs> I'll do it. Write it in blood. That <laughs> way when Fez reads it, I'll understand. Can you get credit for that? Why not? So, yeah, and that was the uh, first crying explosion, too. So I have always felt that that was a night that uh, too much I let too much out and wasn't able to stop again. Where all of a sudden it was just too much emotions and too much crying. How much control do you think you have now, Fuzz? I don't feel like I have a lot of control. Not very much. Because ever since then, crying comes easier and easier. You know, the other weird thing about the toenails thing I was thinking is, if this was true, you would have brought it up so much sooner during confessions right. and things like that. Because it's just so weird. You would have had to know that this was weird enough to... Either no, I, you know he's also secret. You know, he you know he's secret. also putting the scrotum in a panini press. He just <laughs> told me that yesterday. <laughs> but, but I mean, could he say anything now that you wouldn't believe him? Like if he was saying he puts fucking <laughs> toothpicks behind his eyes, you'd be like, <laughs> yeah, you. yeah, you do. I, you know, he he could not make up a story now that you wouldn't fall for. That's true. And and in why general, is, well, I would just believe anything you said, but that uh -huh. one was just a little... Why are you keeping the the toenails in a bag? I, You know what? I'm just, I'm kind of like fascinated by them. And I, and to masturbate too? No, I don't masturbate with them. You They're know? not that interesting. I'm sure of it. Yeah, but I, I mean... Are you shitting in pots and keeping them somewhere around the house? No, I'm not shitting in pots. I bet that fucking house is just covered in flies. Because no. I've cut... You know, tone, whenever I've cut toenails, if one flies and sort of you don't know where it went, I'll spend the next hour tracking that thing down. Because <laughs> the too. thought of it is so gross. Yeah, I don't want to, and I don't want anyone else to have to run into it. So I will make sure that that gets in the garbage. Well, I'm chasing it down too, but it's for the collection. <laughs> and now that it seems like it's such a big, See, he loves he loves having that. It's such a big collection. That um, you're proud of it. That it's it feels too big to get rid of. Like too have much time tour. got spent. In. Have you told your shrink? Uh huh. What's your shrink say? She said that's a new one on me. Um, <laughs> and then she we, she kind of went into this. Did she say something like, "Now I want you to start paying me in cash"? No, she didn't say that. Would you consider donating it to an art museum for display? The thought of not being with it is freaky. Yeah, yeah. I don't even. I, I mean, I had to run through the scenario in my head of will I get it back? Well, you know, right, will I make right. sure? You what know, about so no. I, what if I just cut your toenails for now on and I keep it? He needs a trust. He needs to write up a trust so that nothing happens to his toenails <laughs> if ever he's put in a mental institution or incapacitated. That um, they go to a good home. I'm going to go over and fucking do the same thing that Gilbert Grape did. I'm just going to light that building on fire and I'm going to start hitchhiking my way out of town. All right. It's an apartment building. Other people live there. <laughs> fucking losers on Shutter Island. <laughs> Do them a favor, really. The screams of retards <laughs> breaking light into the night. <laughs> That fucking medieval island that you you and your bag of toenails are on over there. Disgusting. But it's also a thing where I can put it away for a while. Because, you know, like, right now my toenails don't need to be clipped. So the bag is just tucked... Where do you, where do you keep it? It's uh, tucked you away wait? in a dresser drawer. Because there's some big toenails in there. It looks like you wait as yeah. long as you can. Yeah, I'll end up waiting is what happens. To make them look better uh, in the bag? To, yeah, to have a bigger... Uh, what's the word? Um, item. You know, just to have just a bigger, bigger item. I was just waiting for the sickest fucking thing I ever. Yeah, he plays with me, rubs them on his balls. Mouth, you bite on them? No, I don't do that. Rub them on your taint? Because I'm afraid I'm going to break them or, you know, screw them up before they go in the bag. 
You realize that the shrink isn't helping you at all, and just fucking blowing this off, you realize that, you know, she's stealing from you. She was, uh, uh, one thing that we had gotten into with it was, um, did I, was there ever a thing with nails in my past? Toe or fingernails in my past? And I remember one time I had gotten in huge trouble for scratching my sister down her face with my nails and we talked about you know it always goes back a weapon to this is what happens with shrinks and this yeah. is one of the things that makes me nervous about them is they will ask that question and then you just become in love with the idea that that was caused by that right. thing back then and, and then you sort of indulge it too much and why well, that doesn't have anything to do with toenails but it's, but it always comes back to this did your mom ever yell at you and you felt bad? Did your brother ever pick on you and you felt bad? Yes, it's happened to every fucking human being. They've got this Michael Douglas and his kid thinking that he's a drug addict because his dad is Michael Douglas. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you this. I grew up with a lot of drug addicts. And not one of their dads was Michael fucking Douglas. I can't believe that Michael Douglas is sitting around going, this is all my fault. I paid it too much attention in my career. Like, you, know, you were fucking streets of San Francisco. Your kid was selling crystal meth. You can't make a connection between the two. It's like they're, they're, they're CSI or something. And, and originally, when psychologists, psychiatrists started looking into your past, the point was, if we discover the root of this, then we can work out the cause. But they don't right. do that anymore. They just blame it on something and then go on to the next thing. Have never, he's never come back and said, I've learned to make the change. Right. And he's not, you've been in with this shrink for how long? Probably like two and a half years. Never has come in and go, hey, guys, I found a new way for us all to communicate with each other. Or, guys, I've decided to work. At None of his working patterns have changed, even slightly. Uh, nothing has changed in the way he talks with us or does things. Yeah. The person hasn't given him one fucking thing outside. How much money are you giving her a week? Uh, 125. I thought you saved twice a week. Oh, uh, yeah. So that's. I'm sorry. I thought you meant a session. So, I, why would I say session? What, what fucking measurement in life do normal people have as sessions? All right, I'm going to see you in three sessions because I got to. I'm going out of town. I'll be going for two and a half sessions. Try to stay in the fucking reality thing of where the rest of us are. You're on her fucking schedule. You're handing her money and you're using words like sessions instead of what it should be. I'm giving her 125 hours of failure. And now when you've discovered some cause, you're stuck in this blame place. Yeah. And now you have a new problem that you're angry that someone else caused you to be like this, but you haven't worked through But the, anything. To the toenails were never a problem. I was never bothered it by it. It is a problem. Are you, other people I'm are bothered by it. I put it problem. away for like a month at a time. You, you took great fucking pride in being the weird toenail guy. Great fucking pride. Okay, so to, to act like, oh, this is other people's thing. Yeah. He couldn't wait to come in. And when Dave was looking at the toenails and being fucking grossed out, I guarantee you Fez had a fucking heart on that day. He was so happy. That was your happiest day in a long time. And am I wrong about that, Hicks and Dave? The no, he was very... He might have seemed disgusted, but he was, so, it was like a, a sense of accomplishment almost. Yes. He hasn't had that about any of the fucking stuff that he does. But he's like, yeah. And particularly towards Dave. And there was almost a, a, a <laughs> thing of... Him. Yeah. Who's the weirdo now, Dave? Who's the weirdo now? It is a symptom of a problem. Even if the toenails themselves are not a problem, it is a symbol of something else wrong. But he, accomplishment he, works, uh, is the right word, because that's why I don't get rid of them. All right. Try something with a positive effect on you, the world. You have a fucking toilet at your house, right? Yes. <laughs> now, let's suppose there was a leak in the back of that fucking toilet, and you had a bucket there, and you hired a plumber, and the plumber says, it cost me $125 a session. And session after session after session went by, and it's still leaking. Would you not say to yourself, I may have the wrong plumber? But everyone I know is so fucking afraid to say to their shrink, I'm paying you money, and I'm not getting any fucking better. This is, you know what would happen to you if you had, uh, like, a varmint, <laughs> I don't know, right, in your backyard? <laughs> item, you know? okay. item and varmint. All right. Uh, Let's you know, suppose he had a... Um, 
I look at a possum. Suppose okay. you had a possum and you call the exterminator to come get it. That guy's going to be able to catch that same <laughs> varmint, <laughs> move to another part of your backyard, let it go again, and you'll keep calling him. We've got another one. We've got another one. So he could just come keep catching the same so now, animal. Over now he's saying he's a rube. It. Now it's a rube. Yes, this is or a rube. Or a varmint. You've got to at some point say, you 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 haven't fixed my leak. You haven't caught. You haven't solved my varmint problem. I'm telling you, I'd love to get this fucking shrink on the on the air one day, and she won't do it, right? No, mm -mm. you know why? It, for her, it'd be like going on fucking sixty minutes. That's how quick I would be to expose her to the world. Does she have any success stories she can point to? No, because she's not allowed to say who else she's ever worked for. But it was sold to him that she is the shrink to the show business celebrities. She was supposed to be the strength of the star. <laughs> but I can't tell and, you which ones. Yes. Yeah, uh, you know, there's Creative been types. There's no there's been no day that he's seen Sally Field walking out in the other direction. And I've looked. <laughs> or even Sally Jesse Raphael. <laughs> so she's getting a thousand bucks a month for you, right? Mm-hmm. Uh two and a half years? Yeah. Yeah. So she's up. Well over 30 G's that you're not covered for, right? You've just handed her 30 G's. Right, yeah. Out of your pocket. Uh-huh. And for the 30 fucking thousand dollars, you can't say, I expect something to come through here? You're still nervous to say that to her? Well, I look at it from the angle of, it's me. I mean, I'm getting advice, and I'm if I'm not, you know, changing... Right, but why wouldn't you take advice from Dave, give him the thousand bucks a month, and then not take that advice? You know what I mean? We could be, I could be fixing two fucking people on my show. Number one, you're talking garbage to someone and handing them money. Dave's feeling better. His life is better. You're having someone to cry to. And maybe at the, at the end of it, you guys will go back to writing bits again. I'm convinced mechanics do this, too. But... Break something while they're fixing something else? Yeah, so you have to come back. And then, you know, certain people will just keep coming back and coming back and think, it's me, I'm not taking good enough care of my car. Every, everything's an angle. It. But at least to a, me to a mechanic, you can say to him, come on, dude, I want just a fixed car. Yeah. People are afraid to say that about their own brain. And he's going to say to you, I don't know, what you're not taking good care of it. Maybe you need to bring it in more often. And you'll go, okay. But at least right. he's actually working on it. Where well, this woman <laughs> says, I'm going to tell you some things. You go home and work on it. That's not in a book. Do you ever go over a bookstore and pick up books and say, what do people do to get out of these things? You know, I've tried to, like, get into those books. I, I But I just, I don't read. Mm. And it's like, I'll see a book that has, like, a great title, and I'll stop, and I'll pick up the back and mm. check it out. And I end up, like, reading, like, maybe two to three pages of it. Oh, yeah, I you can I can't stick with it. Go to the kids' self-help section. That's I'm not actually a good idea. You know, when That's I interesting. When I had something I didn't understand, I modern art was something I didn't understand why people looked at it at all. It's, it's a little embarrassing. I picked up a children's book on understanding modern Retart. art. Yeah, well, it switched the light on, and now here's a book I, I, I want you to it. pick up. Go over Barnes and Noble and pick this book up. I think it's going to help you a lot. All right, the title of this is "Gay No More." Yeah, read it cover to cover. That's what you wrote on this card. Practice it. Practice it. Um, I don't think it's going to be in the kids section. Jason <laughs> in Houston, you're running fez. I hope not. A gay kid would make me cry. <laughs> hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, you know, typically, a uh, general rule of thumb is whenever you're seeing a psychologist or a counselor, after six sessions, you're supposed to ask for a diagnosis and a treatment plan. Well, he's not allowed to uh, ask her for anything. <laughs> uh, not allowed to bring up anything. All right. Uh, if you'd like to sign up and come in and see Harry Shearer tomorrow, tomorrow's the day. That's at 202 Friends on Twitter.com. Make sure you can be in New York City and Manhattan at the Sirius XM building, 3.30 tomorrow. So Twitter at 202 Friends on Twitter.com. All right, uh, Fez, not only are you in the news from earlier this week, but now you're in the news from Cupcakes Take the Cake about Molly's opening up in New York. They picked you, up the story. You're getting big press this week, Watley. Nice, nice. The PR machine is rolling here. Yeah. 
Yeah, and still no word yet on uh, the Andy Griffith statue. My reward is still out there, $1,000 for who to face the Andy Griffith statue last weekend. Crime Stoppers in Mount Airy, 336-786-4000 for Crime Stoppers. For any information, you'll pick up a cool grand from me. A cool grand. All right, uh, see you guys tomorrow. Peace. Uh, that's the end of my show. Donk. You've been bold with Harry.